Okay, so late welcome to the question and answer. Okay, so we are showing how to share the roadmap with somebody. So this one belongs to Kendra Carey, and we are going to come up and hit share button at the top right. And then we want her to be able to edit it, so we're just going to click on that. If, it's come, if it pops up that she can only view it like that, then we're going to just make sure that we that she can edit it and then highlight it and copy it and then come back over to Facebook and what am I trying to say? Paste it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know what? One thing I'm going to do before I forget about it is this, um, <laughs> Oh wait, now it's all gone. Okay, so here, this question, what are your three number one priorities in life at this moment? What I'm getting at there are things that keep you awake at night. What are, what are the things that are bugging them? So I need to change that on my initial one. Because if I change it on the initial one, of course, then they'll be It'll be correct. Okay, things keep you up at night. Okay, you know another thing I would love. Trying to think of where I saw it. To share with you guys, R is an acronym. I found today that this will come in really handy when I'm having these conversations with people. And I learned, this was what I learned at the John Maxwell certification program, but it's a coaching model called Tagoro and it's T-G-O-R-O-W, T-G-O-R-O-W. R O W and T stands for topic. That means what do you want to discuss? Now in, in this case, as you're having this initial conversation with people, it's going to be pretty simple because you're discussing the roadmap. That's why you're getting them on the phone. They are discussing that at other times you may find that you need to establish the topic first. G is goal. So your question to them is what do you want to achieve? Now that should come to light as they're putting their goals in down here or, or even their priorities, or you may be finding that out as you're forming them and having kind of that on-ramp conversation about their health um, when, you're, when you're enrolling them. I would personally, what I'm gonna be doing is taking that information and copying and pasting it, whatever I get from them on like a challenge group application, I'm going to input that in here, just like at the bottom of one of these tabs, probably the first page. I'm just going to copy and paste it into here so that it's all in one spot and I can reference it easily. But anyway, okay, so T, topic, G, goal. What do you want to achieve? O is for outcome. What do you want to get out? of our time today that gets you closer to your goal. That question to me will be a little bit more applicable in follow-up conversations versus this initial one. But as you're coaching people and, and even as you're following up with them on a whether it's a weekly basis or something like that, 
because that's part of creating success stories is continuing to be in good touch with your challengers. So maybe each week you revisit their goals as they submit, you know, if they're going to turn in weekly weight and measurements or photos the, I will tell you the groups that I have where I require that they do that weekly, they're more successful. I set the expectation that every single week you're going to message me your weight measurements and photos. Is it a lot to ask? Yeah. But do the people who do it see the better results? Yes. So if you don't ask for it, you'll never get it. But anyway, as you are revisiting their goals on a weekly basis, that is a it's a great question to ask because there are a lot of people that aren't just going to offer up what's going on and what they could get from us. Because if I just say, Hey, how's it going this week? Usually I'm either going to get, Oh, it's going good. Or I'm so busy and there's not enough there's not enough meat there for me to coach them better. Like I want to know that they really still don't understand how to use the containers. I want to know that they're getting bored of their Shakeology, but that just, Hey, how's it going? Does not usually cut it. The R is reality. So that question to pose to them would be, and here's, you know, kind of a couple that you can throw around to get at this. What's the current situation? What are you currently doing? So even those are similar to how's it going, but they're much more, uh, they're going to get el elicit a lot better information. What are you currently doing? What's the current situation? Or if they're sending you their photos and measurements and you see that they've gained an inch in the waist, so maybe you're in, re in terms of reality, you can ask them, so what contributed to your inch gain? Think back to dot, dot, dot. Think back to your vacation this week. Think back to, I saw that you went to book club. Were there snacks there? You know, like tell, help, help them to go back in their mind to where they were, what they did this last week, and assess the reality of the situation. And you're doing that through questions instead of saying to them, I see this and I see that and you can do this and you can do that. We want to ask questions. The more questions that you ask, the better. The more talking that they do, the better. Options is O, the next O, options. What options do you have? What's the issue? What is stopping you from moving to the next phase? What else? What else? Oh, what else? <laughs> because you want to keep digging and keep digging and keep it expanding the options until there are no more possible options. And here's a great question. I love this question. If you weren't stuck, what would you do? What would that look like for you? If you weren't stuck, what would you do? And usually they're going to come up with their next best option there. Because really they know exactly what they need to do. Just think about it. You guys know what to do to get to Diamond. You don't need us here asking you questions or telling you what to do. Like you know the next best step, right? So our job is to continue asking questions of our challengers and of our coaches so that they can arrive at the right answers. And that is going to help create more success stories. W is way forward. So here you're going to repeat their options. And then here's, here are the, their, uh, 
three questions that go with this last one, okay? Which are you willing to act on until we chat again? Which of the options are you willing to act on until we chat again? Number two, what should I hold you accountable to? And again, they're telling you, which means they're going to have more ownership in it and they're going to be more successful, which is what we're talking about here. And last but not least of how committed are you to this on a scale of one to 10? I should put like maybe if I've got time over the next couple days or if somebody on here has like just a lot of extra time and wants to put together like an infographic of this wouldn't that be handy for all of us to have and then we could just print it out and like put it right by our desk somewhere we, we can see it as we're having these conversations with people all the time you're really handy so those are great questions so and again like a I've told some of my team I'm keeping basically a log of good questions because great leaders ask great questions and there's some great questions there. So if you keep a log of good questions, I would add those to your question list. And um, seemed like there was something else I was going to say. Next question. Do any of you leaders have any great questions? Ha <laughs> ha. Any more sharing on this before I close it out? Just in case I didn't say, I can't remember if I said it in the video or not. This is based on the book, The Color Code. I would highly recommend that you read it. Really, really helpful. This is based on the book, The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. On the website for the five love languages, you can take the test without paying anything. And they also have one for kids. I think there's even two different kid age ranges where your kids can take their own test. So we all in our house did that. That was lots of fun. And then um, love languages, I'm, I can't remember if there's just a test online or if you actually have to get the book to take that test. All right, perfect. Hold on here a second. Let me stop sharing. And any other other questions about any of this? Hey, Tracy. Yep. I have a question. Um, you touched on this a little bit in your uh, the training video. Paulette and I are running a challenge group, and it's all my customers and it is like dead silence and we've tried the daily post and today I posted a video and we're just not getting any bites do you have any tips on how to deal with that it's also there's money involved it's a biggest loser challenge group so we were sort of expecting a lot more activity because we're giving prizes for most participation and the best results but how many are in there it's small. It's, I think, seven. That hurts anyway. You know, like, even if there's only one po person that doesn't post each day, it's like yeah. you just feel it when it's, when it's that small. So, and I remember those days. And there were plenty of times, I will say this, and I don't know if it's the right thing to do or not, but I've shut down more than one group in my day. And um, because that's my time. It's yeah. valuable. You know, it really, truly is. And I just feel like if there's, if there's a lack of participation, then I, I can't continue it on. 
That mm -hmm. said, how, how long is the group? How much long, like, are, do you have to- This is the long? last week. Yeah, this is the last week. So it doesn't make sense to shut it down now. Finish it strong as if yeah. you would, if there were five people posting every day. Okay. Um, but there are just going to be those kind of things yeah. when it's that small of a number. And it's painful. It, it like, it, it is. It's I'm trying real. to think of a really good analogy, but I just can't even think of anything hardly that bad. <laughs> um, but so, and would you have known that it would be that way? No, I would have felt pretty confident, you know, with that number. I think that's a decent number. That's filling a challenge group, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't say, you know, like if you get seven more another time to not do it, mm -hmm. I would still do it the same way. The other thing I was going to ask is that, you know, there are some times that depending on the way that you're setting up your group, if you're planning on it being a free group or a revolving group or whatever the expectations are set on, then you may get more of that silence. Right. And that's just the way that it is. You know, like you've decided that that's going to be okay because there are going to be people in the long run that are like so thankful that you didn't shut down the group and that you didn't kick them out and this and that, and that's all fine and well, but, and I can deal with that as long as I've got a few people posting. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Cause like, uh, I mean, my, I felt like my challenge group and there's like at least 50 people in this specific challenge group that I'm thinking of. It felt like I was the only one posting for like three days. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. what is going on? Where did everybody go? And so I just posted whoever posts a picture of their dinner by 10 p.m. I'm going to send them a prize today. Okay. And I probably had five people post. <laughs> and then there were two people, that, two, two or three people that posted like today, which was a day late. Right. So they're not going to get a prize, but they still had fun. You know, it was just like, oh, shoot, I could have gotten the prize. I don't even know what the prize is. Or somebody said, I don't know what anybody's talking about, but here's my picture. Like she, <laughs> even had, she had not even read the post. She just saw other people posting a picture and she figured she should post a picture, you right. know? Right. Well, that's a good idea. We can definitely try that too. <laughs> what you, you say? Yeah. So there are, you know, like I keep, try, I keep lots of little, little things on hand to be able to send that kind of stuff out. Mm -hmm. And, um, I really do. I, I mean, for me, like since I run a revolving group that goes on forever, doing the three week thing feels harder to me because it feels less like we have a start date and an ending date, but I need to just plan on doing it like the third week of every month mm -hmm. and reviving the group the first week of every month and then finishing it out the last week of the month. You know, even though it's the same group page, I need to get back into the mindset that it does have a start date and an end date every month. And I think that would probably be beneficial for the, for the participants as well as myself. Okay. thank you huh? yeah sorry I don't have like a quick solution for that no that's okay it's helpful it's validating at least yeah for sure and, and that's you know one one other reason and I, I know I've told my team but I just feel like when you get to diamond and then are able to join some kind of Facebook page that is just for the diamonds and then you get to two star and you're able to join a, you know, like a corporate page that is for up and coming leaders or, you know, people that are pushing for premiere or something like that. And then when you move on to the five star page, each of those to me is just as valuable as the recognition or the increase in income because you're surrounding yourself with other leaders and putting yourself in that place of best opportunity and you learn so much just by being in those different in those different groups. So, to me, that's worth fighting for and worth pushing for in your own business. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Oh yeah, what was the question? Did I say it right? 
What else? Yes, what else? Now, are we supposed to like pause and take 10 deep breaths? And I'm trying to look each of you in the eye. Because what do they say? The first one that speaks is like the loser. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. But um, we've got this topic all week. So as you move throughout your, your groups this week and you're making some tweaks, things may come up. Go ahead and post it on the WOW page and let's work through it. One other little quick discussion point maybe um, that I was kind of get, starting to get into um, in, when I was talking a little bit about engagement was just all of the different themes that you can have for weeks for, and for days. So um, I've got a coach friend who does her first week of the challenge group is about their why. Her second week of the challenge group is about nutrition. Her third week is about tips and tricks. So that would be form and workout tips and things like that. And then her last week is don't remember what the last week is. So there are coaches that will do a theme like that per week. And if that helps your brain, then do that. I kind of like that. Um, but lately what I've been doing is compiling lists. I've got like all these post-its on my desk, one for each day of the week. And I'm just compiling like Thursday, thirsty Thursday, thankful Thursday, thoughtful Thursday, and that, that kind of thing. And just that way I can look at whichever day of the week it is because I don't personally, I don't want to plan out my challenge group posts for every single day because I feel like for me, it hinders me from actually being mentally present in the group. But I do like to have some structure and kind of have an idea of, Oh yeah, I could really talk about that today. So anyway, if any of you guys have grand ideas, that would be something fun to share on our group page this week under, you know, like under the comments of the video. Tasty Tuesday, Transformation Tuesday, Motivate Each Other Monday, Face Your Fear Friday, Fit Tip Friday, Freedom Friday. There's a lot of good things. This weekend, I came up with Wealth of Health Wednesday. The other thing that is great about these little catchy phrases is that when you are posting about promoting your challenge group or coaching or something along those lines, you can easily put a hashtag of that title like over your picture or something. And if you've got Wealth of Health Wednesday, you can talk about health. You can break one of the myths of Shakeology which is a way of then promoting your challenge group without being direct salesy. So I think these can play and play different roles in your business and don't think of them as just a tool for a challenge group. All right, last tip of the night and you guys are the first people I'm telling this to. And it's probably like one of those things that's so widely well known and I'm like the last person on the planet to figure it out. But I found my new favorite app today on my phone. And, oh, okay, so here's how cool this is. Okay, it's called Mantra, M-A-N-T-R-A, -A, Mantra. There is a website, and that's called yourdailymantra.com. There's a, like a four-minute video that explains the app on that website. So here's the deal. You, you can set an alarm for your mantra to go off, and in order for it to go off, it's got voice recognition. So you have to say the mantra. So as we're doing positive affirmations and stuff, so let's say that you have the ter most terrible time getting up in the morning. You set your alarm and you say something along the lines of, I am bursting with energy to get out of bed and start my day on a positive note and whatever, you know. So here my uh, – 
the mantra that I put in to test out this morning, it looks like my alarm came up. It, it'll, it'll come up on here. Let me see if I can. Oh, that's really bad. There we go. Okay. So the mantra comes up and it says speak now. So it tells you what your mantra is so that you, in case you've forgotten. Um, so it says speak now. I'm a 10 star coach because I've taught my coaches how to believe in themselves. It doesn't match. I forgot the wording. I totally forgot the wording because it disappeared. Okay. So I have to try. It's telling me I have to try again. Okay. So first, if I cancel it out, what is, then you can view it. I'm a 10 star coach because my team has learned to believe in themselves. Okay. So I'm a 10 star coach because my team has learned to believe in themselves. So anyway, I just think that's the coolest thing. And, uh, the more that we can be saying that and believing that, you know, you are two star diamond coaches. I'm a two star diamond coach because I've put in the effort. I believe in myself. My, I believe in my team and I'm passing, paying it for whatever. So you get the point, but I think that could be a powerful thing over the course of time. All right, girlfriends. Thank you so much for hopping on the call. I love your dedication. And I hope this has been beneficial for you guys. Have a good night. Thank you.